praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. And welcome to another broadcast of the spoken word. I am Pastor Sandra uh, Carter of Shield of Faith Ministries, located at 17356 Northland Park Court. Uh, we are not currently having service in the building, but God is good. And I know that he has opened up this opportunity through Facebook and other avenues, YouTube, to allow his message to go forth. My husband is Minister Ben Carter, who uh, works with me, and we work together as one in the ministry. I just thank God for every person who listens week after week, our members who give. I just thank God for each and every one of you, those of you who share the message with your friends and family. And I do encourage that you do that because God has given me a word for the people today. And it's my desire to break down that word and give it to you as God gives it to me to help you, to encourage you, and to give you what you need to live in this world. Hallelujah. So let me get started with prayer. And from there, I'm going to have a message for you that I know is going to bless your soul because it blessed me today. Father God, we just thank you, oh God, for coming allowing us to come together once again to hear your word and allow me to teach your word today. I pray, oh God, that you use me in a mighty way, oh God. Let your word go forth, hallelujah, with power and with understanding and clarity. Let it not return void, but let it accomplish that which is sent out to do. Touch the hearts of the peoples, open up the people, open up their ears so they can hear a word that's going to uplift them, that's going to encourage them, that's going to bless them, that's going to show them who you are. I just thank you, O oh God, today. I thank you, O oh God, for being the Lord of our lives. I ask, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit reign in this place today. Let him reign over your word today. Hallelujah. Anoint these lips of clay so I can speak with an anointing and with power that you give to me through the power of the Holy Spirit. I empty myself to you, O oh God, and move self out of way and ask, O oh God, that you move this morning. Hallelujah. Bless the people as, as we close out the message. Let someone accept you as their Lord and Savior because that is the reason for the season. That's the purpose of delivering your message so souls can be saved. Thank you, O oh God. And we thank you in advance for the move of God on this broadcast that souls will be healed, their bodies will be healed. Hallelujah. And they have clarity and understanding. Hallelujah of your word. We continue to lift those who need prayer in, in their bodies, oh God, in this in their bodies. My sister Yvonne, we continue to lift her up in prayer this morning. And we also continue to lift up Sister uh, Bonnie in prayer because they have made special requests. And I know that God is a healer. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm trying to calm myself down because I'm excited about what the God has for you this morning. My message is this. God is good. Hallelujah. My, my topic is the goodness of God. And when you know the goodness of God, you can't help but rejoice. You can't help but just sing praises to the, his name. Amen. Because of his goodness and my purpose today, God's purpose is to give you understanding of why God is good. Amen. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to begin with the hundredth number of Psalm, the hundredth number of Psalm, and it says this, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says this, for the Lord is good. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. So once again, hallelujah, get this in your spirit. You're going to hear this over and over again throughout this message. God is good. Amen. We say it, we hear it. Other people say it. We sing songs that repeat it over and over that God is good. There are many scriptures in the Bible that state God is good. Amen. And we know, hallelujah, that the word of God is infallible. It's the truth. Amen. 
Hallelujah. We already read Psalms 105 that says it, but in Exodus 34 and 6, it says the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. Amen. And Nahum uh, chapter one, verse seven, it says, um, he, the prophet recognized God is good. He said, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows those who trust him. He said, the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And we all know we have troubles. Amen. We had trials that we have up and downs, uh, in our lives, situations that cause us distress, but he is telling us, and we you need to believe in spite of what we go through, that God is still good. So I'm going to talk about the goodness of God. So if, let me ask this question. If someone walked up to you and asked the question, what makes God good? Are you able to answer that question? What would be your response? Would your response be based on what somebody else told you or based on your personal experience of what you've known about God, what you know about God and what he has done for you? Do you recognize his goodness day by day or do you spend more time complaining about what's going on in your life? It is not uncommon for those who face pain and hardship in this life to doubt the goodness of God because sometimes troubles wear us down. But the clear message of scriptures that's in the word of God is God is good. He is uniquely good and that he is the measure for everything we call good. When you look at it, you look at his power, you look at his wisdom, Christians can be assured that God not only desires to reveal his goodness to us, but he is able to accomplish his good plan the best way possible in our lives if we only trust him, if we only believe in him, if we only stand on his word. God is good. Hallelujah. People, you need to hear that today. Even with this virus, this coronavirus that's going on, it's been going on and people thought it was ending and it's one mutation after another. God is still good. God is good. So what makes God good? Nothing. You say nothing. I say nothing because nothing has to make God good. Goodness is in his character. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is good because he is God and that's in his nature and he is divine. I hope you have pen and paper with you this morning because I have some scripture for you to write down and read later and to post on the refrigerator. Put it on your mirror to remind you about the goodness of God. Psalm 119 and 68 says this, you are good and do good. Teach me your statutes, your laws, your rules, your commandments. For you are good and you do good. So basically two things. God, you're good and you do good. Who he is makes him good and the works that he does makes him good. Amen? Hallelujah. God's goodness shows up in every area of our lives every single day. Although we often think of goodness when something big happens, his goodness abounds all the time, every minute, every hour, every second of the day, even the smallest things around us. How do I know he was good to us this morning? For he woke us up this morning, amen? Hallelujah. He provided a roof over our head. We can go to the refrigerator and take something out to eat. We can turn on clear war, uh, running water. That's the goodness of God in his works, what he does. If, if I did not believe God and trust God and know God, Psalms 27 and 13 says this, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I could see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. I would have lost heart. And if, if I didn't believe in God, if I didn't trust in God and his word, and if I didn't know God personally for myself, 
people can tell me about their relationship with God and I can share stories about my relationship with God. But until you know him, until you experience him for yourself is only when you're going to really take advantage and understand the goodness of God. We witness God's goodness when he answers our prayers. The small ones and the large ones, when, he, when we wait on him for answer prayer and he is renewing our strength while we wait. That's the goodness of God. When we receive unmerited favor and that's the undeserved kindness, that's the grace of God. That's the goodness of God. Hallelujah. You know, life is complicated. It's imper imperfect and it can be tangled. But I just thank God that I have hope because his intentions and motivations for his people, for his family, for us are always good. He always does, always does what is right. And, and, and the outcome of, of his plan is always good. When you look in the book of Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, it says, but as far as, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as if this day to save many people alive. So even when you go through trials, when, when people come against you, what they meant for bad, God turns it for good. One thing you have to understand is this about people in life. If you're living for Christ, your light is going to shine from the inside out. Everybody is not going to like you. Everybody is not going to accept you. Everybody is not going to invite you to different events and want you around them because of their darkness in their lives. But what you need to understand is that God is good in spite of you not getting an invitation. God is still good in spite of somebody not speaking to you. God is still good in spite of somebody not liking you. You know why? Because God loves you. What you need to understand, there's nothing unpleasant. There's no evil or darkness in God. The Bible teaches that God's goodness extends from his nature to everything that he does in our lives and for us. And when you read and when you begin to understand who God is by his character and his attributes, you would reach this understanding of God's goodness in two ways. And I said it earlier. He has to, it has to do with his character. And number two, it has to do with his actions. And I repeat once again, Psalms 119 captures both when it, it says this about God. You are good, meaning God, you are good. And God, you do what is good. So you under, need to understand simply that in this scripture alone, God is proclaimed to be good. And there's it's, it's no confusion about it. It's so clear. People try to make the Bible too deep for us to understand. But when you really uh, begin to read it when you study it and you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal and give you understanding it's crystal clear how much clearer can it be that God is good now let me break this down for you who is God and what are his attributes by his very nature God is good he cannot be not good. Does that make sense? That may not be proper, but I just want to make sure you understand there's no way that he can't be good. If he was not good, he would not be who and what he is in our lives, God, our Savior. Were he not good, he would deny himself, which he cannot do. Psalms 52 and 1 says the goodness of God endures continually. So his goodness never ceases. It never ends. 
any goodness we see in the universe or in ourselves is derived from God himself. But understand that his goodness is not derived from any in another, from nobody else, but from God himself. God is good and of himself. He is the supreme God. All good originates and flows from him as the source. So he is the source of everything that we receive. He is the source of the goodness that we receive from God. He is the one that provides it for us. Therefore, only God is good. There is no goodness apart from him. In Mark 10, 18, it says, our Savior, Jesus, has said, made this statement. There is none good but one, and that's God. Mark 10, 18, write it down. Read it for yourself. Who is God? God is love. Love refers to the very heart of God's nature. Understand that God is love and not just have love. We have love towards one another, but God is love. His love involves the grace, the mercy, the kindness, the goodness towards all of us. Amen. Because he is love, goodness incorporates love. So when we speak of the attributes of God, we mean those characteristics or quality qualities that belong to God as God. These are the characteristics that make God who and what he is. God is a spirit. He's infinite. He's self-existent. He is eternal. He's unchangeable in his beings. He has wisdom. He's power. He's holy. He is justice. He's goodness. And he is truth. And one thing, hallelujah, that I want to say about God's love is the agape kind of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to get into the three and four types of love today. I'll talk about that later. He is also omnipotent. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. And forgive me if I say this, I get tongue-tied sometimes. He's omnibenevolent, meaning he is supremely good. He's perfect and un has unlimitless goodness. Hallelujah. So when we say that God is omnibenevolent, we are saying that God is absolutely good and that no action or motive or thought or feeling or anything else about him is not purely good. He is all good. Capital letters, bold. All powerful. Present everywhere. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 23, 23, he said, I am, am I a God at hand, said the Lord, and not a God far off? Meaning he knows the past. He's omnipotent. He knows the past. He knows the present and he knows the future. And he even knows what we're thinking at the, any given time. That's the God that's a God of goodness. Now, let me explain something else. Do you know what else in God's attributes that's good? I talked about, I mentioned it, but I'm going to kind of break some down for you so you have an understanding. God is eternal, meaning he had no beginning and his existence will never end. He, God is immutable, meaning he is unchanging. This in turn means that God is absolutely reliable and trustworthy. In Numbers 23, 19, he said, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall not make it good? God is good, amen? He's going to make good of what he says he's going to do because of who he is. He's uncomparable, incomparable. There is no one like him who, 
who does the work that he can do. He is perfect. He is just. He is no respect of a person's. Hallelujah. So he does not show favoritism. He is righteous, meaning that God cannot and will not pass over wrongdoing. He said, be ye holy for I'm, I'm holy. He wants us, we are the righteousness of God and we have to strive to live right. And when we mess up, that's okay. We can go to him and repent and ask him to help us and to strengthen us. He's sovereign, meaning he is supreme. He is spirit. That means he can't not be seen with, with the physical eye. He's invisible, but that does not mean that he does not exist. God is part of the Trinity. God the Father is the Son and the Holy Spirit. He is three in one, the same as substance, equal in power and in glory. He is truth. He will remain incorruptible and cannot lie. He, hallelujah, is gracious. And his grace includes his goodness, his kindness, his mercy, and love. If it were not for God's grace, his holiness would exclude us from his presence. Hallelujah. Now let's look at his actions. We talked about who God is. And I shared scripture about, you know, it's about what he's, who he is and what he does. Now what did he do that was good? We all learned this as a child. He created heaven and earth. <laughs> it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness. You can find those, that for those who aren't familiar with the Bible and scripture, you can find that the first book of the Bible in Genesis chapter one. But as you continue, and I'm not going to read the whole thing down to verse number 31, it says, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So did you get it? Everything that God made was good. God saw and it was very good, not just good, but very good. So what's amazing is that every time God made something, he didn't just say that it was, that it existed. The Bible says God saw and said it was very good. So when God created, what God created measured up to God's standards, which are very high. It was the only way he wanted it to be. It was exactly the sort of quality he desired. It could only reflect his character, power, and nature because it could not do, he could not not do it. It's his nature. It had to be the way it was. So the Lord is indeed good. His faithfulness is never ending. His loving kindness touches the life of every person and affects every nation. So when we say that God is good, it means that God always acts in according to what is right, true and good. His nature is to be good. Goodness is part of his nature. He cannot contradict his nature. He can't do anything but good. I keep saying this over and over. All of his actions, everything that God is involved in is good. His holiness, his righteousness are part of God's nature and attribute beauty. He cannot do anything unholy and righteous. His standards are high. Because God is good, he gives us what is good. Hallelujah. He can't give us anything less than that. In the book of James, chapter 1 and 2, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift. Everything is from God above. Amen? So whenever God gives us something, he gives us to us out of his goodness. That means his reason for giving it is always good. His timing 
or when he gives, it's always good. The method in which he gives it to us and delivers it is always good. Hallelujah. Everything. It may not be the way you want it, but it's the way God wants to deliver it to you. So that makes it good because he's good. Every good and perfect gift. All comes from God, even the life we enjoy today. Every breath that we take is a precious gift to treasure and nurture every single day. Everything about life is good because God made us in his image and he is our provider. He is our way maker. I want to share something with you. Excuse me. There was a, a, there's a singer by the name of Regina Bell. And she was really popular back in the 80s and 90s. And she shared her experience of God's goodness in a song. And I want you to listen to the song as, she, as I read the words. I'm not going to sing it uh, to you. Praise God. <laughs> but th when you listen to the words, she's telling us why God is good. Because what you need to understand, a lot of times, you know, you get God's word through reading the Bible from hearing a minister's preach, but there's also a message in the music. Hallelujah. He, and she says, I know that God, my God, God is good. I said that he made a way, that he put food on my table, that he put shoes on my feet so he could guide my every step. Jesus saved my soul, and then he brought me out of darkness. God is good. You know that he healed my every sickness with no money in my pocket. God is good. Hallelujah. And it's more to the song, but I kind of condensed it for the purpose of delivering my message today. But if you get a chance to listen to it, it's Regina Bell, God is good. That song really blessed me yesterday as I listened to it. The lyric expresses exactly what Psalms 119.68, that you are good and you do what is good. Because she knew God for herself and had experienced him for herself, she was able to rejoice before him with a song in her heart. And what did our scripture say in Psalms 100? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, serve him with gladness. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. And the way you do that is through song as well. She went before his presence with singing. Psalm 100 was in her heart and is in, is in my heart and you should be in your heart too. That when you wake up, you should be able to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Thank you, Lord, with a loud voice that you woke me up this morning. You may have a little ache in your back, but he woke you up this morning. You should be glad about it. And it's only because of his goodness that he did that. So let me kind of break down this message from the music, from the verses that she, she um, sang in this song. She said she knows God for herself, calls my God. She called him my God. She knows him personally. She experienced him personally. God did something for her and her testimony of his goodness is in this song. You need to know God personally for yourself. And the way you do that is by having a conversation with him, by prayer, by meditating on his word, by seeking his face, by reading his word, by listening to scripture. You can listen to music. And get a word from the Lord. By having a conversation with them. Just like you pick up the phone and you, you call your friend. Call on God. You don't even have to pick up a device. All you have to do is open up your mouth and say, Lord, I'm, I'm calling out to you today. I'm seeking your face. Let him know you know who he is. The Lord of, 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 of Lords, the, the um, bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon. King of kings, Lord of lords, the shepherd, the almighty God. 
Let him know that you know his titles, that you know him personally, that you know what he's able to do. We must understand this, that knowing God is not an optional part of the Christian life. It is the Christian life. You cannot say that you're a Christian and don't know nothing about God. It's impossible to claim Christianity and you don't know God for yourself. Jesus said in John 17, 3, he said, and this is the eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You have to know him. To know means an ex having um, an experience with him, not simply an intellectual, uh, intellectual understanding of facts about God or Jesus or the Bible. There's a lot of Bible scholars that can quote scripture <laughs> from front to back. But they don't have a relationship. They have never experienced God for themselves. In order for you to know him is to experience who he is. To be a witness to how he has moved in your life. How he turned your life around. Some of you may have been strung out on, judge, uh, on drugs. But God touched your life and he took the taste out of your mouth. That's an experience with God. Maybe it has not been that extreme. Maybe he, you needed financial help and, and out of nowhere, God made a way, opened up the door to, for you to receive the help that you needed. Knowing God, it is the knowledge gained through experience. We were created to know and love God and to submit to his good and loving rule over us. He wants us saved, y'all. He wants us living righteous before him. He wants us to experience his goodness in a greater way. Hallelujah. He said that he will not withhold any good thing from us. He's good, and whatever we want, whatever we need, he wants to give it to us. Another thing in her song, God is good, and she is able to sing about his provision. It was God who put food on her table, provided clothing and shoes. The same God that did it for her does it for us today. God is good. He is a God of provision. And she said that he made a way. Sometimes when we try to make a way and figure things out, we can't do it. We make situations worse. But God, when he makes a way, it cannot fail. It will always succeed. You will always be blessed when you allow God to make a way. I'm so compassionate about this because you need to get this today. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43, 16 says this, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. We can't figure it out, but God can make a way when there seems to be no way. He knows and holds everything in the palm of his hands. He can create so you can receive. He can close one door so he can open up another door for you to receive. He can move people out of the way so you can have what you need to have and what you've asked for. She understood, I understood that God will make a way where there seems no way. You heard the saying, won't he do it? Won't God do it? Your answer should be yes. He did it for me. He did it for the songstress. And he'll do it for you if you only believe and trust in him. Hallelujah. God is good even for the small, simple things that we take for granted. 
in Matthew 6, he says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body and what you put on. Because he says, I'll take care of you. We all know the scripture, Psalm 20, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> I shall not want. He gives you what we need. He'll provide for you. We don't, we don't have to worry about it. Give it to God. Cast that care on him. Give it to him. Let him carry the load for us. Let him work it out. You heard of the miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread? We all, we know that story from childhood. This biblical example is of God providing when our own means seem inadequate. There were 5,000 people in the crowd. They had been seeking to hear Jesus. They, they needed to hear a word. They, they needed a word. But Jesus desired to feed the people. But the disciples had no money. And even if they did, they had no place to go order 5,000 Big Macs. <laughs> but just like the scripture said, God made a way. And why did he make a way? Because he's good. God's bountiful provisions in the earth are a witness that he is good. Bountiful means plentiful, without limit. God is without limits. We have limits on ourselves, but there's only so much that we can do. But God is a God that's limitless. Hallelujah. In Acts 14 and 17, it says this. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Amen. We've been getting a lot of rain, but those of us who planted maybe some uh, bell pepper and some tomatoes and things like that, hallelujah, that rain that fell from heaven has caused our plants to become fruitful in this season. That food that was planted by the farmers needed that rain so it could provide food for the people, for grain to feed the, the livestock and the chickens, filling our hearts with food and gladness. We're happy when we have what we need. God is that provider for us because he's good. Just think if we didn't have the rain, we wouldn't have the grain, we wouldn't have the meat, we wouldn't have the chickens. We would be hangry. Hallelujah. But thank God he provides for us. In her song, she also said, God guide her every footstep. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. But when God pushes you and guides you, you need to follow. Hallelujah. And we all familiar with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Where it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lead not to your own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Because God is good, he's going to lead you in the right place, to the right place. Put you in the right position to receive the blessings and the, the, the blessings and the overflow of God. Everything that we need. He'll put you in the pathway for us to receive what we need. Even with my sister Yvonne in the hospital, ordered her steps, directed her path, had some issues with uh, uh, breathing, but her path was ordered to go to the hospital. And as a result of her going to the doctor, we found out that there was a malfunction in her machine, her breathing machine. There was a recall if she had not gone there, they would not have figured out what was happening and she may not be here today. But thank God she's at home because her steps were ordered by the Lord. Sometimes we are led and we don't even realize God is leading us. But when 
uh, before you got saved, you, you say, something told me not to go there. But once you get saved, you understand the Holy Spirit is nudging you, telling you, don't go in that place. If you go, it's going to cause harm. That's because God gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us because he's good and he didn't want to leave us comfortless. When you go against the leading of the Spirit, hallelujah, it causes us to get into a situation we didn't have to be in, but because we didn't listen to God, hallelujah, and his nudging because he loves us because of his goodness and he wants to keep us protected and safe without harm. God is good, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She said that he saved her soul and brought her out of darkness and placed her into a place of the marvelous life. He provides salvation. He did it for her. He did it for me. There's a lot of people listening to this broadcast today who saved. It was because of God's goodness that we have salvation. It's the goodness of God, which is the core of our Christian faith. It's because of his desire for our good. He provided salvation through his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. The more we learn about God's goodness, the more we are drawn to be wonder to the wonderful gift that he offers us. And that salvation through Jesus Christ, his son. Because of his goodness and love for us, God gave his only son who was sinless to pay the price for our sins, debt paid in full. That's because of his goodness and his love for us. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, God made him who had no sin, and that's Jesus, to be sin for us, so that he, he in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, if you have not accepted before you get off this broadcast, you need to repent of your sin, confess that you're a sinner, and God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the word, y'all. You need to ask him to come into your life, and when you do that, you will experience greater goodness in Christ. Lastly, in her song, she knows God because he healed her body. Hallelujah. I've received healing in my body. My husband has received healing. Many of us have received healing in our bodies. God has many names and healer is one of them. Jehovah Rapha is his name and it's a good name. Jehovah means the existing one and, and or Lord and suggests to become known. Rapha means to heal. So he is Jehovah Rapha. God let the Israelites know in Exodus of chapter 15 that he is the God who heals. What he actually said is stronger than that. It's not so much I am the God who heals as is healing is what I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is what healing is what he is. But we have to believe in him. We have to have faith. We have to trust in him. And hey, God heals. And at that moment was a good thing because the Israelites needed healing. It meant he as a healer means that he restores not only physical disease, but personal distresses, mental anxiety, emotional wounds. Wounds from sin we commit against him. Everything about us, he desires to heal. A lot of us have mental anxiety because of what's going on in this world. Many of us have emotional wounds from our past that you haven't let go of. Wounds from sin because you are struggling with things in life. But God can deliver you from anything. Just turn it over to him. Maybe it's an addiction to gambling. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe your desire is to stop smoking. Maybe you're laying around with different men or different women. God can deliver you because he's good. Amen. He is a God. He is a healer. He is able to restore you and bring you into perfect peace with 
Him. Ha! Jesus. The goodness of God is eternal. His mercy is everlasting. And he is faithful. His faithfulness spans every generation. What he did back for the Israelites, he does it for us today. And he will do it in the future. He is the father of all mercies and he is good and a gracious God. What you need to understand that his promises cannot be broken and his word can be trusted explicitly. We can trust what the word of God says. If you can trust, if you trust man, you can trust God. Man will break his word, but God will never break his word. You can trust and believe what the word says is he will do. What you need to understand, he is so willing to forgive, so eager to answer prayer. He is so ready just to bless us beyond what we, can, we deserve or what we hope for. That's the God because he's good. He is eager to answer. He is sitting high just waiting for us to come to him in prayer. He is so ready to bless us with not just things we deserve, but things that we hope for. Believe me. We have to know and believe God. We are able to witness his goodness day by day. I said it earlier, if we didn't believe God, we would, we would lose heart. No matter what storms go on in our, in our lives, no matter how much pain we experience, no matter how difficult the outcome is from what we pray, that God is good. I'm a witness. He brought me out of so many storms of life. In the hardest moments of life, God comes to, to us. He doesn't change. He doesn't falter. He doesn't quit. We are the ones that quit. He doesn't leave and he doesn't let go. We are, the, we are the ones that let go of God and his promises and his words. I can call on him. We can call on him day and night and he always answers. I can feel his presence. Can you? I can hear his voice. Can you? I don't care if it's 4 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock in the evening. He's there for us 24-7. Even grocery stores like Walmart or Meyer said they're open 24-7. That's not true because on Easter Sunday, they don't open. On, on some Christmas, they don't open. But God never closes the door on us. He always has it open for us. All we have to do is knock, pray, and he will open and answer. And because God is good, because of the goodness of God, I have unspeakable joy. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. That's a song. Another song that I would sing for you, but I'm not, is that Joy Bells. Hallelujah. Joy bells keep ringing in my ear. And I feel that way because I know that I'm blessed. I'm blessed because God is good. The word shalom, which the Lord uses to bless his people, means to have wholeness in life, spirit, soul, and body. It means to have nothing missing, nothing broken. God knows that it's the way things ought to be. And that's the way he wants it to be. Not just for a few people, for, but every one of you. Everyone who is listening to this broadcast. Psalms 145.9 says this, The Lord is good to all. All. 
He is our refuge and our strength, a present help in our time of trouble. We shouldn't fear. We need to be assured that in the midst of the storm, God comes closer to, to us than the storm could ever be. I love music. I love listening to music. I love listening to the lyrics and gospel music because it ministers to me. There's another song that says the greatness of the Lord is unconceivable. The love that he shows is unconditional. The power of the Lord is unbreakable. Great is the God we serve. That makes him good, amen? He's gracious, he's full of compassion, he's slow to anger, and he has great mercy towards us. There's another scripture in Psalms 34 and 8 that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. We're blessed when we trust in God. Over and over again, we experience ways that the Lord delivers his servants from afflictions and saves, them, uh, saves us from the hands of enemies. David wrote this psalm because he was fleeing from Saul. David had been appointed an anointed king of Israel, and he was on the run from the jealous Saul. God's, David was God's anointed one. And the, Saul became David's enemy. But in his escape, as he was fleeing from one enemy, Saul, he found his way to the Philistines camp, and he ended up in the arms of another deadly adversary, the king of the Philistines. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he was running from one enemy and ended up somewhere else in front of another enemy. He was in front of, um, I think his name, Ambulak. How do you say it, hon? A, 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 say it loud so they can hear you. Amen. So when he ended up in front of this enemy, the, the, the Philistine, uh, Philistine king, what did he do? He pretended to be crazy so he wouldn't be a threat to the Philistine. He had to do what was necessary in order to get out of this situation. And because he pretended he was crazy, God delivered. Hallelujah. He delivered him. He saved him. He kept him. He kept him from being murdered. So he wrote this psalm because of what God had done for him, because of God's goodness. This is what he said. Oh, taste and see the Lord is good. He had joy, and he was rejoicing over it. Just think about the difference between knowing about something or someone and experience it for yourself. When you taste and see something... It isn't just something you heard about or believe. It's something you've experienced. <clears throat> Did David experience God for himself or, 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 or was it based on what someone told him? No, he was experiencing God for himself at that moment. God delivered him from harm and from danger. But David, we all know, knew him from, as a youth. You all know the story of David and Goliath, and I'm not even going to talk about that today. And what this should let you know, what this story should let you know, people of God, that when you are called and when you are chosen by God, we are not exempt from tribulation or trials. When you get saved, you need to understand, doesn't mean that you will never have another problem. But what is saying that God is good and he will keep us and protect us and fight our battles and get us to the place he wants us to be. David knew that God was good in spite of him being on the run. You need to know that today as well. He knew the Lord would bring him through any difficulties and danger. You need to know that too. So people, everyone who is listening to Broadcast need to get this. God may not prevent life's problems or pains, but he knows how to rescue the righteous from the evil one. 
The word of God tells us that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescue those who are his. When you accept Christ, you become his. Amen. Hallelujah. And because we know God for ourselves, we have experienced him for ourselves. We are able to rejoice before him with a song in our heart too. We all can go before his presence with singing as Psalms 100 in our heart. And it should be in our hearts today and continuously. And as I come to a close, let, just imagine this. Think about it. If God was not good, if God was not good, there would be no mercy. There would be no relief. There would be no grace. There would be no forgiveness. And there would be no salvation. Our life would be a living hell forever. If God was not good, there would be no three... John 3, 16, no gift of God's get, God, only begotten son and no everlasting life. If God was not good, hallelujah, there would only be cruelty and only be misery. How could we find any comfort or peace in trusting a God who was not good? But thank God he is good. And because of the goodness of God, we can find comfort and peace. We can find, find joy. We have the ability and an invitation to draw close to God, to experience his love and the goodness surrounding him. He offers protection. He offers and provides direction. He gives us peace that surpasses all understanding. He provides forgiveness for our sins and our shortfalls. He gives us wisdom and much more, much more because he is good. Taking refuge in the Lord indicates that we trust him, whether our situation or circumstances are good or not. We run to him for the little things in life, the big ones too. And sometimes leaning on God during these hard situations are when we are truly tasting and seeing the goodness of God most. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Depend on God and willingly look to our Father to meet our needs, provide direction and protection. What you need to understand, because he's good, he calls us a bless. And we are. Those who are saved, we're blessed. Because we receive everything that we need from God. He never fails us. He never turns our, his back on us. I have joy today because of him. I have peace today because of him. I have love today because of him. Hallelujah. So this is your opportunity to accept Christ into your life. Ask him to come into your heart so you can just, not just hear about God being good, but you can experience his goodness. Hallelujah. Do it for yourself. It's time. We're living in, in, in times. I'm telling you, he will turn your life around. He can take that taste of alcohol that you've been struggling with off your, your tongue. He will give you unspeakable joy. Huh. He will open up doors that were closed. He, he will create things just for you. I'm telling you what I know because I've experienced them for myself. Just confess with your mouth that you're a sinner and you want to be saved. You let him know that you believe that Jesus died for you and me, but he didn't stay there. He rose on the third day for us. The debt was paid for us. Ask Jesus to come into your life. And he'll do it. That's all. It's simple. It's not that deep. And then I pray that if you receive him, that you begin to walk with him and that you seek an understanding of who he is. 
get a Bible, find a church home. If you live in a city, there's churches everywhere. I'm not in my building right now, but if you want to come, if we go back to the building, I'll let you know. But get you a Bible, a good study Bible. You may not understand everything, but once you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit begins to dwell in you and he will reveal things to you. So that's the message for today. God is good. I hope you receive something. If you want to share this message and your friends don't have um, Facebook, you can go to YouTube under the spoken word, Pastor Sandra uh, Glover Carter, to look at this message today and any past messages. And if you want to sow a seed to this ministry, if this ministry is a blessing to you, look out on the, the Facebook page. We um, have an attachment for Givelify where you can give. So be blessed. Have a blessed week. Let this word dwell in you richly. And understand that God is good. Amen. God is good. Be blessed.